morning is a Friday with him. Good morning. Friday, October 13th. No, September 13th. Oh my goodness. September 13th. Not October, but it's coming up soon. Anyhow, we have a fantastic show here for you. The news headlines, the weather report, and today in history. This morning, Mary Rose, our oldest resident in town, will be sharing some of her life stories. Also, a visit to the Buttonwood Park Zoo in New Bedford, and Karen McHugh will be teaching you how to get the most from your groceries. But first, I would like to take this moment to thank Know Your Average Antiques and Antique Shop down Cranberry Highway in East Wayham for donating the props that you see in the morning show. So stay tuned because the weather and the news headlines are next. I got sunshine today, mostly sunshine. High at 66, partly cloudy at night with low at 49. Tomorrow, a mixture of sunshine and clouds. High at 73, overcast at night with rain showers at times, low at 64. Sunday, some showers in the morning, then partly cloudy in the afternoon. We're looking at 77 for a high and 58 for a low. And now to the news. There were plenty of news stories coming up at the news headlines. Wareham Week had the following stories. The Board of Selectmen voted to establish a committee that would look into building a new police station. Following the format established by similar committee in Bourne, the committee will, comp will be composed of one member each from the Board of Selectmen, the Finance Committee, and the Capital Planning Committee, along with five members at large who would ideally have experience in architecture, engineering, construction, or law enforcement. The committee will also include Town Administrator Derek Sullivan, Acting Chief of Police John Walsack, and two staff members of the Wareham Police Department servicing uh, as members in the board, but they will not have um, any particular say in, in the decision making. So, uh, Selectman Board Chair Patrick Tropiano was selected to be the representative of the board of the committee. And Nazi El Kasi, the chairman of the Zoning Board of Appeals, appeared before the planning board in his capacity as a developer and the owner of Cedar Village Inc. The lot is one of two of the one of two on the road that Cedar Village owns. Each was initially site was initially the site of some unusual duplexes. Uh, on Monday, September 9th, Cedar Village was requesting to separate only one of the lots into two. Other lots is, um, is currently involved in litigation as Cedar Village is suing the planning board over a previous denial. El Kasi explained that he wants to divide the lots to facilitate the sale of the homes along with the land they are built on. The last uh, time the project was before the planning board, members denied the request because the road was insufficient. Um, at that time, it was a narrow, dirty road. Since then, El Kasi obtained an easement from the neighbor that allowed the company to remove about six trees and pave grade and um, widen the road. Additionally, an uh, S curve in the road was straightened. Into another news, Selectman Peter Teitelbaum brought up the many lawsuits currently being filled against the manufacturers of opioids. In his statement, he said, it's all uh, predic predicted on the notion that these drugs manufacturers miss led people and created addiction problems. Title Bum would like Wayham to join in in the slew of lawsuits 
Currently, more than 2,000 state and local governments have filed lawsuits against Purdue Farmers, uh, which manufactures OxyContin. The Wareham Police Department, both fire districts um, and the town's emergency medical service would likely find a way to estimate how much the opioid epidemic has cost the town. And Dominica Venise, the 19-year-old charged with multiple threats to fast food restaurants on Cranberry Highway in summer of 2018, pleaded guilty to all charges and was being sent and has been sentenced to two and a half years in the Dedham House of Corrections, followed by five years of probation. For the three charges stemming from his three phoned in threats to Wendy's, Burger King, and McDonald's, Albanese was sentenced to two and a half years in the House of Corrections. All the sentences will be served currently, and Albanese was given credit for the 335 days he has already spent in custody. So that's already a year down. Anyhow, that's for today's news. We're going to take a short break, and we come back. We'll continue with more. Welcome back. Mary Rose of Onset is Onset's oldest resident. She is 105 years old. As you could only imagine, she has plenty of untold or told stories throughout the century and more of her life. So here is a little bit of some of those stories. At 349 Onset Avenue is the home of Onset's oldest resident. Mary Rose, who just turned 105 years old. I remember my, my father's store. It was this area, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. This yeah. was the store. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and had a room in back. And uh, he had a wonderful store, I tell you. He had bananas hanging from the rafters. And uh, he had boxes of grapes. Born in 1914, Mary Rose is the oldest of seven children. She attended Oak Grove School right outside her house. Mm -hmm. So this particular school right here? Yes. They, who was allowed to go there? Just the Cape Verdeans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were segregated from the Hammond School. Hammond School was mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. yep, and right mom the was going there. there. Mm -hmm. And they actually took them out of there and put them all over here, separated them. Though she was born in the United States, her first language was Creole, the language of her parents, who were Cavernian immigrants. One of her childhood fond memories was the day she got a baby sister. That, mom, that day, we were all in, in, the, in that room there. Mm. Now it's the kitchen, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And, um, 
we don't know what's going on upstairs. I, I tried to send me to get the, the ladies. The, you know, the, the, the good wives. Yeah, get yeah. the ladies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they all went upstairs. Then my father comes down and says, you have a sister. <laughs> and at the same time, the train is mm -hmm. back here, the tracks. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the train went by. The train is the runner back, mm -hmm. way back. And well, so I went, I told my sister and brother, did you hear that train? Yep. Well, Alvina came in that train. My father told me that that's where we all came. <laughs> <laughs> then I go to school and I tell them. You told them Alvina came from the train? Mm-hmm. The boys are, are, are smart. They, they, they do everything, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> they, she, they said, told me, Alvina didn't come on any train. <laughs> and they left it at that. I left it at that. <laughs> She also recalls tough moments in history, such as segregation, war, and the Great Depression. 1929, there was a... Um, the Depression. Mm -hmm. The crash. My father... In the government. ...closed the store. That Depression was bad. You see people walking in the road looking for money. Nobody had work. There was a factory in East Wenham closed down. And they got out and used to work on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. What did they have in that factory? Was Co that cotton? Cotton. There was a cotton, cotton factory cotton. in Wareham. That it's was a pretty down, interesting. Yeah, down mm -hmm. south. Her family, like many other Cavalian families at that era worked in the cranberry bogs. Everybody picked up cranberries, especially the men. Mm -hmm. They they bring the kids too, they brought us too to to pick the berries. And we did a good job. I made thirty dollars, you know, that mm -hmm. was good. And that's how I got that coat with the fur. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She met her husband while picking cranberries. She also recalls the day his aunt came to her house to ask her parents for a hand in marriage. Uh, I don't know what my father was going to say. <laughs> I went to bed. I knew they were coming. I went to bed. <laughs> I stayed there. Yeah. What was it like growing up with your mother? me yeah <laughs> well she was always uh, a very quiet person mm. uh, very religious but she was she's she loves like she loves to teach mm. so she was very kind and um, she taught me a lot you know and, and patience and um, uh, she cooked she's a very hard worker in the summers we my dad had made a um, in the backyard, he made uh, out of barrels and things like that, fire pits and stuff. So mom would uh, can, she would can, do all the canning. We lived down the Cape at the time and the weathers are bad. So um, to prepare for winter, they would, um, she would can all the vegetables, corn and beans and piccalilli and uh, pickles. And, um, and then we had our, our home was like a, a zoo. We had chimpanzees, we had geese, we had uh, calves, uh, cows, and then that would get slaughtered for the winter. We had a huge freezer down in the cellar, and so they would package it all up, all the meats, and then uh, like they would buy, uh, they would purchase rice by the hundred pound, Uncle Ben's rice by the hundred pound bags, and then they put tobacco inside so the bugs don't get the, the, the rice. It lasts all winter. Lima beans, you buy it in the big bags and you put the tobacco, that crush up the cigarettes and put them in there, you know. Scrambled in a pool of long memories is a pivotal incident in her life, the day she eluded a terrible fate. She was telling me when she was going to night school <laughs> and uh, 
she was wondering, I'll, I'll just cut to the chase there for you. She was wondering why some of the ladies in the class, they would, uh, all of a sudden, she started seeing some of the women not coming back to, to school. So she was saying that um, one day she went to school, she went to the school, and so she took a ride with this guy. So go ahead, you pick it up from there. Yeah, well, that guy was uh, Creole, you know, and he was teaching school, too. He said, where do you ladies live? They said, oh, well, not them. He said, well, I live up that way. I can give you rides. And then the next day, <laughs> it took two days. Those two women, I didn't see that, that those women never came back to class. They never come back. I don't know where they went. Back there. So the next night, she took the ride again for him to take her home. Mm -hmm. So you got in the car, and he's driving off from school. So where do you go? All of a sudden, I see this. there's snow on the ground, and there's woods. And she doesn't recognize where she is. <laughs> I said, I was gonna, you better take me home. I said, you're not going, you don't go home this way. He says, I shortcut, and I, that, you know. Then he stopped the car. He said, I want you to, to uh, promise me that you go out with me. I said, I'm not going out with nobody. I went to go to the, the door. Open oh, yeah. the door. He knocked, he locked the door. She started saying I the Hail Mary. Yeah. That time I was going to church all the time, you know. And, but I didn't realize that I was strange. Mm -hmm. You mean that? All of a sudden I happened to look up, I see a car coming with lights on top. Blue flashing lights. The, the cop come right by him. Got off and said, what are you doing here? The, 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 what is this you stopping in the s s snow? Are you all right, lady? I said, I'm all right. I said, I'm sitting up in the big He told him, I want you to get, get the car going. I'm going to follow you. So let her go. You, you take her home. He said that. He started the car. He went, he didn't go too far. He says, you and your Hail Mary. She never went back either. <laughs> I wanted she to quit finish the school. my high school, you know, but I, uh, I should have reported him. That's what I should have done. When somebody asks you about your secret of making it to 104, almost 105, what do you say? Well, I didn't do it. On purpose. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's amazing that God has allowed her to to be able to enjoy the technology of today, and so it's fascinating. It's it's like uh, when people are ill, you know, and you're going to pull the plug, and then next week they have a cure, <laughs> you know. So it was like, wow, she can take advantage of this. So it's really, really something.
in a nutshell mary rose attributes personal communication and family as a recipe for a long happy life Welcome back. You can visit Mary for yourself so you can get some of those stories. It was only 11 minutes long. You know she had plenty to say longer than that. Anyhow, now we are going to visit the Buttonwood Park Zoo located in New Bedford. Zoos have come a long way since 1874 when the first public zoological park in Philadelphia debuted in the country. During their nascent days, zoos were a place where animals lived in captivity and are put on display for people to view. The perception has long changed. Nowadays, zoos across the country are a safe heaven for endangered species. When you're choosing species to the zoo, it's no longer what is the most popular. It's really focused on what species need the most work. And when I say that, it means what species really need the work from a um, conservation standpoint, species that are threatened, species that are endangered, that really be, need to be at zoo as a part of captive breeding programs to help these species from going extinct. Buttonwood Park Zoo's Animal Hospital assures the well-being and population of these species. So in case you're wondering, why is it important to assure the survival of species apart from yours? And you do get that question a lot. Um, what do I care? Why would I need to change my habits? Well, it, it's, everything's an ecosystem. Everything is connected. So you can say, oh, well, I don't need red panda. Well, that impacts so many things, not only other animals in its environment, the plants in this farm, seed dispersal, there's a lot of things. The entire plant here is interconnected. And when you start losing these major species in these ecosystems, it has far-reaching impact. We can see in our own backyard, best example I can give you, we have all kinds of problems with Lyme disease on the south coast. Well, that's because our deer population is so high. Why is our deer population so high? The natural predators, the cougars, the wolves, they don't exist anymore. The only thing that's out there is the coyote. Well, the coyote doesn't eat the mice to spread the ticks to the deer. There's a whole ecosystem. So how does it affect me? Well, you worry about Lyme disease? Well, that's one of the reasons is because species have gone extinct, even in our backyard. Do we always draw such a straight line? It's never a straight line. And one of the difficult things from a biological standpoint and from an evolutionary standpoint is oftentimes the impact are not immediately known. It doesn't happen overnight. There are some species that go extinct and it's immediately felt in the ecosystem. Many of them have long-term implications. My first visit to Buttonwood Park Zoo in New Bedford cemented that thought. The Buttonwood Park Zoo is one of the oldest urban and suburban zoos in the country. It first opened its doors in 1894 and are currently celebrating 125 years of conservation commitment to more than 50 endangered and threatened species. Walking around the zoo, it is hard to believe its age, all thanks to the cosmetic surgery back in 1996. Yeah, back in... Um in the late 90s, early 2000s, the zoo closed for a complete remodel. There was, you know, it was shown as age back then. Um, so the entire zoo was done over. And, you know, that's about 20 years ago now. So, um, yes, it was definitely a bright and shiny new zoo and an old footprint. And uh, right now we're actually working on a master plan. It's been about 20 years since the zoo reopened. And we're working on updating everything at this point as well. A component of the master plan was the expansion of Emily and Ruth Habitat, the two oldest residents in the zoo. In addition to opening Forest, Rivers and Reef Reservation in 2017. 
One great thing about the Rainforest Rivers and Reefs building is that we created mixed habitats, particularly on the Amazon side of the building. And what that basically means is that we don't have a singular species in one exhibit. We have a variety of different species living together. And that can be everything from small monkeys to tropical birds like parrots. We have lizard species and we even have tons of fish species, species down below. Now, from an animal perspective, there's a lot of stimulation going on. They have all kinds of different animals. They need to learn how to cohabitate with all these different animals, and it creates not only a rewarding environment for the animals, it also creates a rewarding experience for the visitors that are coming to the zoo. So part of our master plan is to redesign our barn area into the Nature Connection Education Center. So the barn itself is being retrofitted into four new classroom spaces, as well as a brand new animal ambassador facility where we'll be able to have our animal ambassadors um, get up close and personal with our visitors on a more regular basis than they are now. Working with Nature Explore, Charlie's Nature Play and Outdoor Nature Playground opened last July. The zoo also runs classes and public programs to help people best understand nature and the world around them. So this is um, called Science on a Sphere. This is a tool that was developed by NOAA to be a way to visualize kind of global data. So what we're looking at right now is an actual satellite image taken from space of Earth. And what we're able to do with this is really do lessons. We do a ton of school programming and some public programming on things like weather, um, space, and really anything in between. Um, so we have, let's see, right now we're looking at over 660 different data sets that we can put up on the sphere. Um, everything from the age of the seafloor, which is what is up there now, um, to, let's pick some other fun things that we can see, bird migration patterns. Um, so truly we can, we can do a lot of really neat things with the sphere. So right here you can see um, they've put two data sets on top of each other. One is air temperature and the other one is bird populations. Um, so you can see how bird populations may or may not move with the change in temperatures and seasons. Now for those who would say to you, wild animals do not belong in the zoo, what do you say? I agree. <laughs> I get this question all the time. Why? <laughs> I need to qualify that, don't I? <laughs> I get this question all the time. I'm a zoo director. I've been working in zoos for about 30 years now, and I wish, wish there wasn't a need for zoos. I really wish that we could all just enjoy animals out in the wild, but that's not reality. Reality is species are becoming threatened, endangered, and going extinct at record levels. There are species that are at the Buttonwood Park Zoo and other zoos around the country that barely exist in the wild or are extinct in the wild. And the only chance for these species ever to survive or to ever be reintroduction back, reintroduced back into the wild is the captive breeding programs of accredited zoos. So in a perfect world, you wouldn't need to have zoos. We have such lush wildlife interacting with humans. That's not the world we live in. The world we live in is that wildlife's under this constant threat, and zoos are at the forefront of saving these species from captive breeding programs for reintroduction and also for conservation in the field as well. So whether you are in for the exotic experience and look at the beautiful pandas to the majestic elephants, or you're interested in seeing the faces of your occasional neighbors, Bottonwood Park Zoo may just be the answer. Yes, and you too can visit the Bottonwood Park Zoo. They are open seven days a week. You can see their, um, their hours are online, Bottonwood Park Zoo in New Bedford. So right now we are going to feature another program of the day, and that is Angel Babies. This is a nonprofit organization that is there for those families who are only granted brief moments with their babies. Angel Babies is there to make sure that each moment is precious. Take a look. I'd like to make none, but unfortunately the need is great. 
pregnancy loss, miscarriage, stillbirth is a very taboo subject. So anything we can do to help raise awareness and so that way families know that they're not alone. They don't have to grieve alone. They don't have to walk this path by themselves and that there's many of us out there. Unfortunately, to be able to purchase a gun like this, there's such a small market, it's almost unavailable. So when families are in those moments um, that they get the news that their baby's gone, it's not available. And you just can't walk into a store and get something for a tiny baby who is only one pound, you know, and it's to help take a little bit off their plates. If I make it to the heart of you, I will not go back. I know we can make it through, turn it blue from black. If I make it to the heart of you. Um, one dress helps a family and that's all we can ask for is to be able to help that one family in their darkest days. Because it's their first and last moments with their families. It is the only time the families are gonna get with their babies. They're not getting first days, they're not getting wedding days, they're not getting those monumental events. This is all they get. And each baby deserves to be dressed as any baby would, you know, and to have those beautiful moments because it's all the family are going to have. If I make it to the heart of you, I can make you... I will take any volunteer, um, anyone of any skill level, we can find a chore. Um, you can come and cut and trace, you can sew if you can, um, you know, you can help organize dresses, iron, there's always something for any skill level if anyone is willing to donate their time. It could be If I make it to the heart of you, I will make you see that the heart of you belongs at the heart of me. That the heart of you belongs at the heart of me. At the heart of you. All right, let's take a break and we'll be back. with us this morning we are broadcasting live from our WCTV studio in Wareham this is good morning Wareham your source for local news weather traffic and more information and now for a moment in history let's take a look at where we were today in history
All right, on today's advertising history, Oprah. We want to say queen. Anyhow, she gave away more than 275 cars to the audience members of her show in 2004. The vehicles were given to Oprah by Potiak, uh, Potiak as a promotional tactic to gain interest in their new G6 cars. According to the U.S. government, however, these cars were not exactly free as the recipients were still responsible uh, for the taxes and that summed up to $6,000 per car. Still, it was a very wonderful deal. Who the heck would turn away a car for $6,000 of taxes? Not one. Anyhow, today in television history, the long-running television show Law and Order debuted in 1990. Created by television legendary uh, Dick Wolf, the franchise would have several successful spin-offs like Law and Order SUV, SVU, which started in 1999. According to IMDb, the original show had 20 seasons, and SVU is still going strong as his 21st season. He's just, well, it just started. <laughs> and also for today's uh, hip-hop history, legendary West Coast artist Tupac Shakur was killed in 1996 known with, by a known gunman who shot him in a drive-by in Las Vegas, killing him at only the age of 25. Despite his life and career getting cut far too short, his legend still lives on. And for today's birthday, shout-out goes to legendary author um, Roald Dahl. Dahl. Born in Wales in 1916, Dahl is known throughout the world for his many classic uh, children's stories like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, James and the Giant Peach, and the BFG. That is all for today in History Segment. To learn more cool historical facts, you can go online under history.com. The coffee segment is next, but first, let's take a look at a lovely break. studio however i had her last wednesday and she was here to talk about how you can get the most out of your groceries so take a look all right welcome back this now is the coffee segment with me is karen McHugh. 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 yeah <laughs> it's okay karen everybody McHugh. messes it up <laughs> I, I had another pronunciation this That's morning okay. i was like is that another guest? I said, no, it's still Karen. Well, when I taught at Old Rochester, I had kids who called me Mrs. McHug, which was McHug. cute. McHug. Oh, okay. yeah, I but think I had something similar today. <laughs> <laughs> um, so she is here. She's back. And we see some foods on our table mm -hmm. here. And we're going to be talking about these foods. No, we're not going to be making a sandwich today <laughs> or marshmallows. Yeah. Anything of that <laughs> yeah. nature. Uh, but we're going to be talking about food labels. So you could... You know, we you can help you to understand what you're buying and why you're buying. We all know sometimes we shop because we feel a certain way. I have done it. You have done it before. You do not care. Looking for something that can make you feel good yep. quickly. Yep. But for those other days that you actually are all there in your head, <laughs> um, this will be the best way. And yes, Karen isn't a professional nutritionist. Correct. But she has done her homework. She knows what she's talking about. And these are some of the things that work for her. So 
Oh, you could use the spare pencil. Mm -hmm. Let me just inspire you a little bit. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's start. What should we start with? Uh, how about labeling? Labeling, okay. And by the way, this white bread does not work for me, but we'll get into <laughs> that, okay? All right, uh, labeling. Well, when you look at a label, there are a few things that people tend to not necessarily know about. Number one, when you pick one, you've got this nice box of fun crackers mm -hmm. or uh, appetizers. You want to look not just at the nutritional facts, but the actual genuine serving size. Okay. When you pick up a container, even if it's small, it doesn't necessarily mean that's one serving. There could be several, which is deceptive, because when you look to where the calories might be located mm -hmm. um, on this, I think I should put my glasses on <laughs> so I can see that would be really good. Yeah, in this case, calories are listed right here, okay. but that's per serving, not for the whole box. So don't fool yourself. Don't this fool is a big yourself. problem people have. Um, with maintaining a healthy diet and not eating too many calories is they'll pick up a container and decide for themselves how many calories are in it. So that's one thing to look for, a serving size and what the real calories are per that size. Okay. In this case, they're saying serving size is four crackers. That's not much. Okay. But it's 60 calories. That's not much either. Okay. Depends on what you put on it is the next step. Another thing which I want to mention to people right away is pay attention to outside labeling. I don't see it here. I don't know that I have anything that says this, but the words natural, uh, all natural. There are a lot of words that are used for advertising on food packages that have no legitimate value. They have, they're not defined necessarily. They have no legal value. The advertisers just put these words on because they feel like it, and people so are fooled. See, non, non GMO. Thing. Non GMO is probably true, which okay. means um, what is GMO these days? That's the latest thing where they uh, make foods with, uh, I think it's a spray or something, some sort of a pesticide. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure. So that's probably okay. But the use of all natural means nothing. nothing. You want to look at what the actual ingredients are, you want to see how much fat or sugar is in something. And you, you know, when you're talking about those labels that actually mean nothing, some people would buy something. I mean, if you have a gluten allergy, mm -hmm. it's great that you're buying something that says gluten-free. Yep. But there was this trend, I remember, while mm -hmm. I was in college, we all eating gluten-free things mm -hmm. wasn't because of the allergy but we equated it as being healthy or we wouldn't have as many carbs or carbs yep. would be easily broken down. Yep. Yep. It's all bogus. Uh, most of it is. You have to do your homework. You've mm -hmm. got to get online. You've got to talk to your nutritionist. You've got to talk to somebody who has the expertise in the particular food that you're talking about. You go to someone and say, or look it up, what exactly is non-GMO? What does uh, gluten-free really mean? Mm. Uh, does it matter to me if I don't have to worry about gluten, if I don't have any issues with, I think, a celiac disease or something? So it's important to do your homework on the food. A lot of people don't bother. We're all inherently lazy. We go shopping, we're hungry, we grab some food, and we decide in our little heads what um, the value of the food may be to us, and it's not necessarily true. Here's an example of um, where people will come into the supermarket and like, we grew up with white bread, yes. let's face it, we all did. And we liked our white bread, they even have advertisements where you could tear it in half and that somehow had value, you're probably too young to remember <laughs> that, I remember it. Um, but to get a basic loaf of white bread is very val it's valueless basically it's just filling your stomach temporarily and why because the white bread is a bleached flour and a lot of, there are a lot of additives put into it it's not a healthy flour to get a healthy flour and again it's back to packaging is look to see what the label says in this case is one that i always buy well often buy sometimes i buy whole wheat breads with a lot of um, seeds in them. But this makes better peanut butter and jelly, especially when I've got visiting grandsons at mm. times. Um, this actually doesn't say 100% whole wheat on the top, but I know if I read on the back, it does. Um, when you're buying breads, rather than getting white bread, you switch to 100% whole wheat. Here's another packaging gimmick. Sometimes they'll say wheat bread. That may mean they sprinkle a few more little bits of unprocessed wheat in there or less processed. It may mean they put brown food coloring it to make it look brown. So that's why you want it to say whole wheat and when you can get one stone ground, and I know from this package it is 100% whole wheat. If it says 100% whole wheat, 
then you're golden. When you make your PB and J with this or your morning toast, you're getting some nutritional value out of this with the fiber alone that you will never get from that. So they right there, it's mm -hmm. fiber that it's a lore, but yep. um, when you look at the carbs, what what are the carbs in that one? Carbs is another story. There are carbohydrates, mm. there is fiber, there's a lot of things. I'm not sure what does it say. This I didn't buy that. This one says 15 grams per slice. Okay, this one says 7 grams per slice. Oh, okay, that's a but big variation. It's a big variation, but what's the fiber like in this? I wouldn't trust it in the, a heartbeat. Oh, okay. Because the fiber, it says direct dietary fiber is zero. <laughs> Dietary fiber zero. This one has 7% and has 2 grams. Okay. What you want to look at is the ingredients, too. In this case, the ingredients on the back right mm -hmm. here, like mm -hmm. with everything, says whole wheat flour. That's the number one ingredient. That's the second big thing I want to mention when you're buying foods is look at the ingredients and the primary, the largest amount of a certain uh, ingredient yeah. in the product is the first thing listed. So this starts right off with whole wheat flour. So you know that you're getting something that's not processed, it's not bleached, probably fewer preservatives in it. Mm. There's a lot of work that goes into ruining flour to turn it into white bread. Oh, okay. That does not go into a whole grain bread. So the uh, reading the ingredients will tell you, and then, ag again, with the help of your nutritionist, learn how to read the labels on fiber and protein. Protein is great, and the reason protein is great, and I bought an example that I have from home that I use a lot. I hope it's okay. I'll just do this. <laughs> it's, a, it's a cereal I buy a lot because it's very high in protein, mm -hmm. and what I like about that is protein fills you up. So when you get a lot of good protein, it's filling your belly up, and you don't get hungry again as fast. Mm -hmm. So there are advantages to that. Very so. good. All right, and then you have some healthier things. You got your yeah. brother's tuna, speaking of protein. I brought in tuna. I'm not a fan of tuna. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned on my show that we filmed yesterday, I'm not a fan of celeries. A few things I, I'm, I'm not. And it's, you can't really read this label, but buying uh, solid tuna in water okay. has fewer calories mm. than tuna in fat. But yeah. I believe the, fat, the oil that is in tuna isn't unhealthy for you. Just fat always has more calories than water, obviously. Yeah. So, um, but this is something we keep in our house for the other people in my household who do like tuna. <laughs> I don't care for it, but it's a it's a very healthy. Well, when food. it comes to making tuna, tuna mm -hmm. itself, that package there is mm -hmm. really not harmful at all. No. Um, even when you eat that out of straight from the can, that's the best right. way. Yep. But then we make a sandwich out of it, mm -hmm. and apart from the bread, you talked about the bread. Yeah. We have mayonnaise. Yep. I have tried, we have Miracle Whip, those other, yeah. and they don't taste as good. That's right, and so they, they never will. <laughs> yeah, and you take something healthy yeah. like that, yeah. a good example of turning it to something completely wrong at the end of the day. Uh, mayonnaise, I just use it sparingly, as they say, judiciously. Just use a little bit. Use just enough to make it wet. I personally like mayonnaise mm. a little bit. I'm not going to get rid of it, but just don't use 5,000 tablespoons of <laughs> yes. it with a little bit of tuna. Who's kidding who? It's a matter of being honest about what you're eating. <laughs> so you make your tuna, you add your chopped vegetables, that'll also fill up the food, mm -hmm. the, uh, the, end, the end tuna dish that you're making, and add a little bit of mayonnaise. I like actually the low-fat mayonnaise. Okay. My husband doesn't, but too bad. That's what I, that's what I use. <laughs> and it tastes per perfectly good to me yes. using low-fat mayonnaise. So there's a way around it, just don't use a lot of it. Well, they, c they have come up with all types of variations of mayonnaise nowadays. Mm -hmm. You have the olive oil. No, yes. just olive oil. Mm -hmm. Speaking of oil, yep. we know vegetable oil, mm -hmm. because of the word vegetable, I mm -hmm. think it's good oil. What about the um, olives and all that? Okay, well, it depends. Olive oil is very good for you. It's, it's an example of an uh, unsaturated fat. If a, if a fat is in liquid form all the time, that's much better for you than something that comes in solid form, mm -hmm. like a butter or a lard a shortening. That's just nasty stuff for your heart. And again, okay. you talk to your physician or your nurse about your heart, but they'll always recommend liquid forms of fat. Olive oil is an excellent example. It's part of very healthy diets. What you don't want to do with olive oil in the sesame oils is use them in the wrong food preparation because olive oil and, for example, sesame oil have a very strong taste. Mm. So they're great 
Uh, olive oil is great for making salad dressings. Sesame oil is great for sauteing up vegetables and fish and meat for an Asian-based dish. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to put olive oil, ooh, let's see, in something that traditionally calls for vegetable oil, which I think is usually corn oil. Yes. Um, I can't think of anything off the top. Oh, brownies. Oh, I learned my lesson. <laughs> as, <laughs> as a kid, oh, yes. I got into this real health thing when I was in college and decided to make brownies with organic, natural cocoa, and I used peanut oil instead of vegetable oil. Those things were nasty. <laughs> <laughs> they went right in the trash. So mostly baked goods. Okay. They're calling for vegetable oil for a reason because it's going to work with the rest of the food. Olive oil would not. But if you're going to have an oil, keep it, keep it what's called non-saturated as opposed to saturated. Okay. If it's in liquid form, you don't want to eat tons of it because it's still fat. It still has a lot of calories. Another way of getting fat is in some vegetables. My favorite, or actually, is it a fruit? Avocado, which I think is uh -huh. technically a fruit because it has seeds, is an excellent source of natural fat. Again, there's calories in it, mm -hmm. so you don't want to eat 18 avocados at a sitting. But it's a phenomenal way of getting fat in your diet without adding slathering butter all over yes. your bread and things like that. Oh, that's good. Actually, I, have, I will be having an avocado mm -hmm, in my mm -hmm. lunch. Well, our, our show that we filmed yesterday, we made meat chili, and I strongly recommend, I did at the end of the show, chop mm -hmm. up some little chunks of avocado and put that in the top. It's yummy. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the things that mean nothing when you're shopping that you, you just can pop up on your face so you should notice quickly? Hmm, that's a good one. Well, you have this. Would yeah. they be located in that? Uh, oh, actually, speaking of that, this is funny. Okay, let's talk about <laughs> your ketchup. Is this right. a vegetable? Could this be labeled as a vegetable? All right, well, let's look at the label here and see what's <laughs> actually ketchup comes from tomatoes. I've never tried to make ketchup. Uh, well, okay, the first ingredient is tomato concentrate from tomatoes. But it's not telling you how much re real tomato was in this. What's in the concentrate? Uh, can you get anything out of this? Well, you're going to look and see what you've got for your vitamins. Woohoo! a uh, tablespoon is going to give you 2% of your vitamin A, 2% of your vitamin C. It won't kill you, but at the same time... <laughs> uh, one tablespoon is 20 calories, so if you've got a big burger and you put three or four tablespoons of ketchup on that Aww. or on your fries, it starts to add up. Sodium isn't bad. This is only 7% for the one tablespoon, but uh, you're not going to make a meal out of this. My mm -hmm. concern for this labeling is first ingredient is tomato concentrate from red ripe tomatoes. It's not telling you how much tomato is actually in this and what's in the concentrate. I believe they put a fair amount of sugar in these. Oh, uh, There's no fiber. It says four grams of sugar. Can you make your own ketchup? I don't know. I've never tried to. I bet you could. Yeah. Go online. Type it up. See what you get. <laughs> Why not? Give it a try. Uh, I would imagine if you had a good food processor. Yes. Mm, don't know. Never mm, tried. Interesting, because yeah. I love ketchup. Yeah, I yeah, it's not my favorite, but yeah, yeah most people it is for the the white American foods. Yeah, ketchup <laughs> is very big in our diet. Um, and you brought, I noticed you brought a uh, oh, thing yeah. of peanut butter, fats. When you buy, when I mentioned solid versus un, uh, saturated mm. versus non saturated, this is saturated. The, look at this. Tip it upside down, nothing comes out because all of your fat in here is solid. This also has. Quite a bit. Of, well, sometimes they take the sugar out, and notice that they're advertising one whole gram of protein. Mm. Big deal. <laughs> uh, did I bring my? I didn't bring a natural. If you buy a natural peanut butter sold in the exact same aisle, yeah. right next to the Jif, and I think Jif actually now makes a natural peanut butter. That's where the word natural has some meaning because it's a unsaturated oil. So when you open it up, you go, "Oh, you're kidding me, right?" You have to take. A I knife have and bought it too. It. Yeah, you have to really have That's some time in your schedule because you gotta yep. work it. Well, no, you don't necessarily. You buy the bottle of it. Mm -hmm. You ready for this? Do that. Tip it upside down on the counter, and the oils will drain. And then when you go after a day or so and flip it back, it's a real, real quick stir. And then if you leave it in the fridge. It won't separate out as quickly. So that's all you have to do. Can also, yes, you can make your own peanut butter. Throw a bunch of peanuts in a blender. There you go. You've got peanut butter. You got peanut so, butter. So, and you've got it with uh, uh, unsaturated fat, 
which is much healthier, and a real peanut butter also has, I'm sure, a lot more protein than these packaged uh, Whole ones Foods with saturated. Whole Foods has the machines. You just grind whatever. Yes, there you go. Butter. It's, it mm -hmm. tastes, I, know, I do it with the almonds. Yep. Oh, oh, yeah, almond butter. Yeah, yeah almond yeah. butter or the uh, honey, um, honey nuts, and then you grind them, and mm -hmm. you get this delicious yep, sure you do. honey yep. peanut butter. Yep. Well, the honey's that they've got. You've got some refined sugar in that, so be a little bit okay. careful. Hunt, well, hunt, yeah, honey. Depending on how they, where that honey is coming from, that's a that's a tricky word too. Natural honey has uh, a type of sugar that is better for you yeah. than other types of highly refined sugars. But I have to see how they're using the word honey. But to buy a natural honey is better for you than the using the word honey in something else, so they may just sprinkle some sort of a heavily processed sort of product and call it honey. So it seems like you really have to do your homework when you, you know, you got to know what is in there because yep. to take them at face value, they said it's healthy, whatever, yep. it may not mean anything. Exactly, exactly. There's a lot of gimmicks out there to get people to buy things, and because it's in our faces all the time in the media that we should be more concerned, which is absolutely true. It doesn't mean that you can go to the supermarket, oh, there's that magic word healthy or better for you. Mm. It doesn't mean anything. Read your labels. And don't be, I think a big mistake some people might make is, oh, I've got to take everything out. i got to take that and i got to get yeah. rid of it. Yeah, and i got to yeah. take the peanut butter yeah. and toss that and the whole thing. One thing at a time. Get rid of that nasty bread. Mm -hmm. Spend a little bit more money and buy a 100% whole wheat bread. That's the only change you make for now. Then you get used to this bread, you find you can't even go back. Give yourself a few days or a few weeks with peanut butter and jelly. Then you switch out of your peanut butters with yeah. all the saturated fat, and you switch to the natural peanut butters. Again, a little bit more money, but they go a long way. The flavor is more intense, so you use less of it. And little by little, one product at a time, and you'll find yourself craving the good stuff quote unquote, after a while. And you find you can't go back to the white breads or to the heavily sugared or fatty products. Then you go to the restaurant. You love your french fries with your ketchup. Switch it up, spend maybe a dollar more, and instead of getting regular fries, get sweet potato fries. They, they are very sweet. There's quite a bit of natural sugar in that. There's a lot of calories, but they're a little bit better for you because you're getting the nutrients in the sweet potato, which are a little bit better than what you're getting in a plain potato. You're getting more vitamins in a sweet potato. So there's little bitsy things that you can do in a restaurant or at home and switch things out little by little and get, um, get yourself used to eating better foods. Don't well, do it all at once. Thank you so much for being in the studio to tell us about this. I'm sh I learned a lot, and I hope my viewers did too. Good. Um, our guest was Karen McHugh here in the studio talking about healthy eating and effective ways of... Well, Queen on that video cannot close this show because Queen on that video was Wednesday's Queen. So this current Queen is here to say thank you so much for joining us this morning for our lovely program. And uh, we will be seeing you back on Monday with more. If you missed us this morning, this particular show will re-air this evening at 6 p.m. It will also go on our YouTube channel, Wareham Community Television on YouTube. I cannot appreciate you enough. Wareham, have a fantastic weekend and see you on Monday.